Take a look at that face. Hi, I'm Russ of Aquarimax Pets. Today's video is an isopod species profile and care guide for Porcelio hoffmanzegei. I'll start with a short intro to the species, including some variants that you might encounter. Next, I'll describe its housing and care requirements. After that, I'll assess its usefulness in vivariums as a biocustodian, and finally, we'll take a look at its place in the isopod hobby as a pet and as a display animal. Porcelio Hoffmanzegei, or Hoffmanzegi, or Hoffmanzegi, or however you want to say it, like a number of the larger species of the Porcelio genus, is endemic to Spain. They're often known simply by their scientific name, but are also referred to as Hoffs, or, due to their considerable size, as Titans. It's one of three large Porcelio species that compete for the title of largest fully terrestrial isopod commonly kept in the hobby. Porcelio expansus has the stockiest build of the three. Porcelio magnificus, I believe, has produced the longest documented specimens, but I've been keeping all three species for some time, and the largest individuals of these three species that I have seen so far in my personal collection have definitely been titans. This individual here is one of the largest males that I currently have, and it actually has the potential to get a lot bigger. Like many of the large Mediterranean Porcelio species, hoffs are sexually dimorphic. The males, long before they approach maximum size, have visibly longer uropods and a proportionately longer, thinner body than the females. And just look at those crazy antennae. There are a few different forms of Porcelio hoffmanzegei in the hobby. The most common form, the nominate form, has a slate gray body edged with an attractive white skirt. Porcelio Hoffmanzegei chocolate is available as well. My original colony of Porcelio Hoffmanzegei threw quite a few chocolates at one time, but I haven't seen many lately for whatever reason. A newer form in the hobby, not a morph, but a locality, is P. Hoffmanzegei black. As you can see, this locality has darker coloration and a noticeably narrower skirt. To introduce the next color morph, I've enlisted the help of Chris, the Mad Aquarist Biggs. He's been working on isolating a really interesting color morph of this species. Let's take a look. Well, this is the new culture, the newest one. It's only been recently set up. Now, I did have, there's a chocolate coming there, but uh, prior to setup, we did have only two at the time of setup, but we have had as much as six of the solid whites. That's just a matter of finding one. There's one right there. Now, I did have males and females prior, but at the time of the changeover to the new bins, I could only find two females. So we know that the adults will throw the solid white. So now it's just a matter of letting the culture reestablish itself and get some more. And once we've got enough, once we've got half a dozen or so, males and females, then we'll separate them and see if we can isolate the trait. Thank you so much for sharing that footage of such a fantastic color variation. Best of luck with isolating that strain. It looks like it may be a form of leucism, as the eyes are black, as you can see in the photo. You can check out Big's YouTube channel right up here. Like me, his interests are varied, so he has lots of great content relating to isopods, fish, tarantulas, and beyond. Before I get into care information, I'd like to give my fantastic patrons at Patreon a shout out. I've always been fascinated by all the creatures of this world, and I really love sharing my interest with others. Patreon is absolutely one of the best ways to help me do that. If you'd like to help me share my passion and what I've learned and continue to learn, you can help out for as little as one US dollar a month. Just click the link at the end of the video or in the description. Now, 
On to the care requirements for Porcelio hoffmanzegei. With regard to the large Mediterranean species of the Porcelio genus, we often think of them as requiring a lot of ventilation and a very distinct moisture gradient. Well, that is true of some of the giant Porcelio species. It's not true of all. When I first started keeping this species, I did provide a lot of ventilation and a very steep moisture gradient, and it worked very well. But then when I read Oren McMonagall's book, Isopod Zoology, I was surprised to see that he indicated that Titans can actually tolerate considerable variation with regard to ventilation and moisture. I still provide good ventilation for this species, and I think it's quite beneficial. But I do provide somewhat less ventilation than I used to, and they still thrive and breed well. I also continue to provide a distinct moisture gradient, and I think that is just easiest for most isopod species anyway. I should mention that Oren's book is a fantastic read, and I'll put a link in the description. When it comes to feeding this species, Titans are a little different than many other isopods in the hobby. Some other members of the Porcelio genus, like Porcelio ornatus, Yellow Dot, and Porcelio levis dairy cow, are well known for their strong feeding response. In this video, I show how both Yellow Dots and dairy cows snatch food right from my fingers. My hoffs are considerably more shy about feeding. Another hobbyist once exclaimed, while referring to this species, Do they ever eat? It may be partly due to the fact that I've never really had huge colonies of this species, but I rarely witness a feeding response firsthand. Now, I know they're eating, but that's mostly because the food does eventually disappear and they're obviously breeding and growing. They just don't attack it like some other species do. And keep in mind that's been my experience. If you've had a different experience, let me know about it in the comments. Leaf litter doesn't appear to figure as prominently in their diet as it does for many other isopod species, but you still should continue to offer it. They seem to be a lot more interested in fish food pellets, shrimp, and other such fare. They'll eat some fresh vegetable matter too. Feeding is not the only area where titans are a little bit unusual. There are also some special considerations when keeping and breeding them. The first is that this species is territorial. That being the case, it's important to offer them separate hiding spots within the enclosure. That's why many hobbyists, myself included, have taken to using egg flats as hide for this species. They provide separate little modules for them. You may also wish to house the adults in small groups of one male and a few females in a number of smaller bins, rather than keeping them all together in a larger bin. I know that Wally of Supreme Gecko has mentioned that that's what he does with a lot of success. Another thing to keep in mind with Titans is that if there are not enough hiding spaces for the offspring, this species tends to be cannibalistic. In short, don't overcrowd this species and make sure there are plenty of separate hiding places for both adults and young for best results. For those of you who have been wondering if hoffs can be used in bioactive vivariums as cleanup, I have to say that I've never tried enlisting this species as a biocustodian. One reason for that is that this species is large enough that it would likely be seen as food by quite a few reptiles and amphibians. You don't want your titans to end up as a rather expensive snack. There are quite possibly certain situations in which this species could work as a bioactive cleanup crew member. For example, there are a lot of snakes that would not be interested at all in eating isopods, so it could be a possible match. but. To be honest, I'm not likely to try it. If you have, though, please let us all know how it went down in the comments. The main reason this species is kept is just as a pet or hobby species. This was, in fact, the first of the large Mediterranean Porcelio species that I ever kept. I had heard that it was a good species to gain experience with before keeping some of the more challenging Spanish species, and several years and many species later, I think I would still agree with that. Another thing the Titan has going for it is, of course, its sheer size. It may not be the biggest terrestrial species available, but it does get impressively large. It's also quite an attractive isopod, no matter which morph or locality you keep. Admittedly, it's not the most outgoing day-active isopod by any means, but I've experimented a little with keeping this species in a clear display container, and from what I've seen so far, it does tend to acclimate somewhat to the setup, and will begin to be seen out in the open a little more often after a period of time. 
Titans are fairly common in the hobby. I was able to obtain a permit to receive this species, but I cannot ship it out of state. If you want to keep this species, your best bet might be finding some from a local breeder or perhaps a reptile expo. To sum up, Titans are a pretty interesting species. It's not the boldest species out there, and it's definitely not high on my list of go-to species for bioactive setups, but it's not too complicated to keep, and there's no denying that this is a real titan of an isopod. If you haven't seen my other isopod species profiles yet, please check out the playlist up there and comment on this video to let me know which species I should cover next. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on a variety of aquarium and vivarium pets. And isopod content is one of my specialties. Feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for notifications all so you don't miss my next video.